Imagine I came up to you and I said, damn it, I had to spend a hundred dollars yesterday. Your response wouldn't be, wow, that's a lot or dude, that's nothing at all. Your natural response would be to say, well, what did you get for that hundred dollars? If it was a cup of coffee, yeah, okay, you got ripped off. But if what you got for a hundred dollars is a Bitcoin, then that's nothing at all. Just like you link the cost of something to the value of that thing, you need to link pressure drops to flows. Pressure drop is the cost of obtaining flow through a process or a piece of equipment, be it a nozzle, a heat exchanger, a pipe, or a reactor. The pressure drop through all of these pieces of equipment is not the same, but they all cost something to obtain flow. You don't want pressure drop, you don't get any flow. What I have done here is drawn a system curve. This is a curve describing the relationship between pressure drop, in other words, the price I pay, versus flow rate, which is the valuable thing I am trying to obtain. In my last video, I set up system curves for various pipes. You should go see it if you haven't already done so. There you can see actual examples of how much pressure drop you need to pay to get flow through two kilometers of pipeline, depending on the diameter that is used. The difference between pressure drop and buying things in your day-to-day -day life is that the items you buy typically get cheaper the more of them you buy. That's why buying in bulk is a thing. Pressure drop is a pain in the ass because it gets more expensive the more flow you get. This is also why pressure drop is a killer in processes, especially if you run close to the capacity limit of that plant. Any additional pressure drop due to blockages and restrictions can have a dramatic impact on plant capacity because it creates a much steeper system curve. For this reason, we installed pressure differential measurements all over our process, especially in areas where we suspect that fouling or blockages can occur. We want to know ahead of time so that we can take appropriate actions before our plant capacity is impacted. Now, I've been a process engineer on a plant before and I know what you people do. You set up a nice Excel sheet for yourself where you pull in all the values for pressure drop for the previous day. You set up a high limit for what that pressure drop is allowed to be. You even go the extra mile and perhaps plot a trend, do some conditional formatting of the cells so that they, they go red and you know that something's wrong. I'm not saying you should stop doing that. Absolutely monitor the pressure drops in your process. They're critical. I'm just saying that that high limit you've set up is probably crap. That's because that high limit only tells you something if you're clo running close to the capacity of the plant. What you're doing when you're plotting a chart of pressure drop over time is you're considering only the cost of something without taking into account the value of the thing you're paying for. Let's take a look at an example of why this is the case. Imagine I have a heat exchanger that is designed to have a flow rate of 10 tons per hour and it was sized so that at that 10 tons per hour it has a pressure drop of one bar. I'm a good plant engineer, so I set up a monitoring tool to warn me when the pressure drop goes too high. I don't want it to go red every time I have one bar pressure drop because it's allowed to have that one bar pressure drop by design. So I set the alarm at a little bit higher at 1.1 bar, so it doesn't give me nuisance warnings. Imagine I come in one day and I see that my heat exchanger pressure drop measures 0.8 bar. It's below my alarm limit and I think that's fine. My job is done for today. But what if I tell you that my flow rate yesterday wasn't 10 tons per hour, but it was actually 8 tons per hour? You may still think, okay, my flow rate is 80% of the design rate, and my pressure drop is 80% of the design pressure drop. Looks fine. But here is where we need to understand what I said earlier about pressure drop becoming more expensive the more flow you want. The relationship between flow and pressure drop is a square relationship, not a linear one. We've all heard that somewhere, but for some reason when we monitor our plants, we totally forget that. So if we took our theoretical design of one bar at 10 tons per hour and asked, what should the pressure drop be at eight tons per hour? You would find that it would, should be no more than 0.64 bar. 
but we were already at 0.8. What we should do is something we call normalizing the pressure drop. We take the situation as we have it right now and say that since we're not running at design flow rate, we should calculate what the pressure drop would be if we increase the flow rate to the design rate right now. We do this using the exact same equation. So our 0.8 bar at 8 tons per hour actually equates to a pressure drop of 1.25 bar at the design flow rate. 25% more than it should be. If this was the situation in my plant, I risk that I would not be able to process at my design capacity if I haven't oversized my pump or compressor enough. Now here's the thing, pressure drops are not perfect square relationships when it comes to flow and velocity. It's a good approximation but that's why we develop very complex expressions describing pressure drops depending on how complex the geometry of a piece of equipment is. As an example, in my last video I have the system curve for a 4 inch pipeline which I've plotted and I've taken a very rough approximation in terms of a square relationship and tried to plot it against that system curve and you can see it's a very good approximation but in some cases it underreads and in other cases it overreads. And the further away I move from the design limits, that normal operational range that I'm looking at, the more that is going to deviate. A pipeline is fairly simple though. The more complicated the equipment, the more that square relationship will likely deviate. And it might not be square at all, it might be some other exponent. It, the best thing you can do if you have plant data is plot that pressure drop against flow and see what the relationship should be. You can fit a curve to that data and use that as the normalization so that you're not just looking at pressure drop as a single number. So just like you look at the cost of goods and consider what the value of those goods are, you need to link pressure drops to a flow. The next time you look at a pressure drop, think, okay, what is the flow to give, that gives me this pressure drop? Because depending on the situation, $100 can be a heck of a lot of money or it can be absolutely nothing at all depending on what it is that you're buying. Unless, of course, you're a student, in which case $100 is always a lot of money.